Hello guys, welcome back. Now in the previous tutorial, we created our position object and uh, we went ahead and created it and added it under the recruiting application. Now in this tutorial, we will take a look at the list of fields that will create for the position object. Now fields are nothing but the columns of that table, right? So we're going to go ahead and start working on creating these columns of the table. So the first field that makes sense for the position object is the status, right? You want to, to know what status the position is in because anytime you are looking for to fill up a position, you have to go through some of the approvals, right? You need the, you need to approve the salary of that position the candidate is going to get. And then, um, it is to see if it's an approved status or the position has been filled or the position got cancelled because nobody approved that position. So things of that nature. So we are going to create a status field which will have these list of values. You, The user can only choose only one of these values. So the status of the position can be either a new position, pending approval, open approved, etc. So this is going to be the first field that we will be creating. And then the next field that we will be creating is um, what's the open date for the position means starting when the position will be open. So we'll create a field to capture that. Hired by means we're going to say when do we want the field to be uh, the position to be filled by and the close date would be there and where the position is means it's a, is it a remote position or which of the places the position is open. So we'll have another pick list which will tell you that this uh, particular is this particular position is open in one of these cities. Then the description of the position means what are the skills that are required, what is going to be the responsibilities um, that comes under the position, etc. So that's the field that we will be doing. Skills required, educational. So these are some of the fields that we will create. And the next thing would be minimum and maximum pay. So that's another field which will tell you that this is going to be the uh, salary that the position will have. So minimum salary would be this one. So the maximum has to be this. What kind of position it is? Is it a full time? Is it a part time internship, etc. So this is these are the list of fields that we will be creating for the position object. And uh, just like you have, uh, you can create an object through the object manager as well as through the schema builder. You can also add fields to the object using the schema builder as well. That is much faster. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to create the field called status and these are the pick list values. So I will be attaching this sheet with the tutorial. So go ahead and take a printout or just open up the this particular uh, sheet and then go ahead and I'll start adding these fields uh, under your position object. So we're going to go back to the object manager here. You can see here, this is the object manager. And in the quick find, I will look for the position object. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the position object. It's a custom object here. So I'm going to click here and under the fields and relationships. So this is the fields and relationship. And under here, I will add the new field. So here I'm going to go ahead and select the field. So whenever you have to create the field, you have to select the field type. So the number one step is choosing the field type. Now you come across different kinds of data, right? Sometimes you have to store somebody's email address. So that type is like an email format. Sometimes you have to store somebody's phone number, a text. So that those are the different kinds of field type. So these are the standard list of field types that are available inside of Salesforce. So you can choose from one of these type. So for the status, what we're going to choose is the field type would be a pick list because that's the pick list. Uh, it will have all these different values, new position or it's an open position or approved, etc. So those are going to be the pick list value. So the, these are the data types that are available that you can choose from. So auto number is a system generated sequence number that uses a display format you define. So auto number will be automatically would be incremented for every new record. So more uh, anytime you add a record, this number will be automatically generated. And then the next record, it will be incremented by one, etc. 
formula is there it's a read only field that that derives its value from a formula expression so that's the formula a roll up summary look up relationship when we talk about relationship that's when we are going to discuss about these uh, kind of fields now coming here checkbox this is basically allows user to select either true or false currency means if you want to store things like the salary or the maximum pay um, allow the users to enter a dollar or the other currency amount and automatically formats the field as a currency amount this basically is very useful if you're exporting the data to an excel or other spreadsheet so this is currency data type if you want to allow user to enter a date or pick a date from a calendar that's when you're going to use date let's say if you want to store somebody's birth date uh, year they were born things of that nature uh, for this position object if you wanted to uh, store when is the position going to open from etc so that's going to be the date type that we will choose date time means if the time is also very important just like the date so if you want to enter a date and time uh, then you're going to choose the date time uh, as the data type email if you want to store uh, somebody's email address if you want to users to enter an email uh, address which is validated to properly ensure the format means email always will be um, at gmail.com or at uh, uh, yahoo.com if, if things of that nature if this field is specified for a contact or a lead user can choose the address when clicking the send an email so email field if you wanted to um, ask the user to enter an email address so it'll be properly formatted geolocation means if you wanted to share the address or the law includes the uh, latitude and longitude components uh, to calculate the distance so that is where the geolocation field comes number if you just want to store somebody's uh, age or uh, height etc so then that can be a number field percent allow user to enter a percentage number for example 10 if you have entered 10 then it'll automatically become a adds the percent sign to the number so that's a percent phone number pick list multi select in the case of pick list user can only choose one option in case of multi select user can user can choose multiple options so it's a multi select allows user to select multiple values from a list text if users to enter any combination of letters and number you're limited on number of uh, characters that you can put text area if you want to enter a little bit more number of characters it allows up to 255 characters on separate lines text area long it gives you more space to enter ca characters about 131,000. text area rich if you want to add images or format text like and you wanted to make the heading look bigger and um, bold underline etc so if you want to enter formatted text or um, you want to add images and links then you can use text area rich it also allows the same amount of characters that are available under the text area long but it allows you to enter formatted text text encrypted this allows the user to enter any combination of letters and number and store them in an encrypted form so let's say if you want to store password or um, things of that nature where you want to hide in an encrypted form then you can choose this option time if you're only looking at let's say uh, what time the meeting is if you wanted to go ahead and set up something like that then you're only interested in the time then you can choose this time option here and the URL, if you wanted to store the website URL, then you can use this data type. So you can choose one of these values here. So for our status field, we are going to choose a pick list. So here I'm going to go ahead and scroll and I will select the radio button next to the pick list. So this is the field type I have chosen. That's the first step. The second step is the name for the field. So I'm going to go ahead and give the name is as the status and values can be either a global pick list value set means it's the pick list which can be globally available or you can specify what values that pick list will have and each value is separated by a new line so as i mentioned here if we go here this is the status field and it will have these values so it'll have new positions i'm going to go ahead and copy this and then i'm going to go here i'm going to add into a new position then what other values pending approval all of this so i'm going to go ahead and choose all these options and paste it over here so these are the different options or the values um, that can that can be chosen for this status field now enter value so this is going to be there if you want 
the users to only restrict pick list to this values, then you have to choose this restrict the pick list values to the values defined in the value set. So it means the user can only choose one of these values. They can't enter anything besides that. If you want to display these values alphabetically, then you can go ahead and do that. Use the first value as a default value. So if the user has not entered, then by default, this becomes the, the first value. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to set this as checkbox so that the first value is the default status. And then scroll down. So this is the field name. This gets automatically populated. And then if you want this field to be required, means the user has to provide a value, then you're going to select this checkbox so that to make the field required, we will leave it as it is. Now, which all profiles will have access, the edit access to these, this field. So I wanted to give everyone the access. So I'm going to click on this visible and it will make it a visible to all the profiles. So these are the standard list of profiles and I'm giving visible access to all of these. So if you want to give only read only access, then you can select one of these options to give only read only access here. So now here I'm going to go ahead and uh, scroll down and then hit next and then save. So this field will be automatically added to this position layout. So if you go ahead and hit the save button, now you can see here, if I go to the fields and relationship, a new field has been added and this is the API name for the field. And this is of the type pick list. And now if you go here, you will see when I click on the new button, this is the, if I have to uh, refresh the page. So if I go ahead and refresh it, and uh, let's say you click here. Now you can see here, this is the position title is there and then the status. So these are all the different statuses that you have the, you can choose from new position, pending approval. So this is the another field that we have added on the position object. Now, if you want to add more fields and in, in a faster way, you can do that by going over to the schema builder. And from the schema builder, we are going to select our only one object that we're going to select is the position object. And then if you want to add fields, so here, if you go over to the elements, there are two tabs here on the top elements and the objects. So from the elements, you can enter these fields as well. So you can add faster all those fields that you want to add. So from the next stop, tutorial, we're going to add some more fields on the position object based on the sheet that I have attached to you. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.